while we're waiting for more people to join, um, I'll go through the questions that were submitted. So hopefully the people who submitted them will catch the response in uh, the recording. So the first question was about the open source aspects of Grist. Um, so Grist Labs is an open core company. We offer Grist hosting as a service with free and paid plans. Our hosted version is found at docs.getgrist.com, which uh, you guys are all familiar with. Um, currently, the self-hosted version has all the key features of the hosted version, custom layout, summary tables, Python support, charts, custom widgets. Um, there are a few nuances, and the biggest is that you'll need single sign-on logins set up um, in order to have user accounts. We'll link a helpful article um, that goes into detail about self-managed Chris. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and post it on our community forum and we'll be able to help you out. Next question was, they're interested in the integration with other tools and in giving different access to part of data tables to different users. So first up for the integration portion of the question, Grist can be connected to thousands of other services uh, via integrators with Grist support. So including Zapier, Integrately, Pably Connect. Um, check out our help article on integrators. It'll be linked in the chat and it includes a list of all integrators as well as some examples of how to set up an integration with other services like Google Forms. And then for the other half of the question, which was about giving different access to different parts of tables uh, for users. Um, in order to do this, you would just need access rules, which are available in all documents. Uh, we did do a webinar on access rules, and I think it'll be very helpful in learning how to use it. So we'll link uh, the article from the Help Center and then the webinar as well. Definitely take a look at those. And if you have any questions, post in the community forum or email us at support at getgrist.com. And then our last question uh, was asking about Gantt charts. If there's any way to make Gantt type charts with Grist, um, our recommendation would be to build a custom widget. And you can do this with an open source Gantt chart project. We'll link an open source project in the chat as well as instructions on creating a custom widget. So if anyone out there does create this, please share it with us so we can make it available to everyone. Um, so with enough determinations, something like it has been done with formulas. And so you can see that in our Thanksgiving meal planner, which we'll link in the chat as well. Just know that this would not be practical for your needs. Um, creating the custom widget is the best way to go, but you can take a look at the formulas and see the amount of determination it took to build it. Hello to everyone who has joined us. So we'll just get started. I just went through um, the questions that were submitted. And, um, welcome everyone and uh, welcome to the October webinar. So this is the first webinar of our four part series, Grist for Teams. Um, all of our previous webinars are available on YouTube and a recording of this one will be available as well, uh, roughly 24 hours from now. Um, you will get an email when it is available since you signed up. We do send an email to let you know that the recording is available. So today's webinar is all about team sharing and collaboration. We'll walk through team site creation, adding team members, creating workspaces and documents. And then I'll also just show you some general cool features along the way. So first up, uh, we'll walk through creating a team site. I've just created a new Grist account, so this is just, just a personal account. It's not a team yet. Um, so immediately on our screen, we are prompted to create a team. 
So we'll do that. You just click the green button. Um, just know that if you close that, the little upgrade button is always there. So you can always click it in the future. So we'll create a team site. It does let you know the difference between the free team and the pro team. So be sure to read through the differences. One might be better than the other for your needs. Um, some of the big ones are the difference in row count available and then API calls. So I'm just going to create a free site today. So you have to name your team. And then you can create a subdomain. So that's the portion of the link uh, that will reflect your personal team, um, followed by getgrist.com. And you can change these, and I'll show you where uh, towards the end. So I'll go ahead and create my site. Easy as that. Um, so now, right on our screen, we are prompted to invite some team members. So let's do that. We can click the button here. Um, this button does disappear once you start using Grist. Um, so if you need to add more team members, there's always this manage team button in the upper right hand corner. So to add team members, you just type in their email address and it will prompt you to add them just by hitting enter or you can click the little box that appears. I'm going to add a couple team members for us to use today. And it's as easy as that to add them. Now, note that it isn't saved until you hit the confirm button. And then once it confirms, it'll email them and let them know that they've been added to your team. So now that we've included them in this list, again, it hasn't been saved yet, uh, we can update the access level for each of our team members. So I created the team site, so I am an owner, meaning I can do anything. Um, we'll go through and assign our other users the correct access. So admin, they're also gonna be taking care of the whole site. So we wanna make sure that they have owner access as well. Now this next one, we're gonna grant them editing access, editor. The difference between editor and owner is that owners can see and change sharing and they can also modify access rules. Um, so an owner could come in here, manage team, add users, whereas an editor cannot do that. Uh, while the differences by default are minimal, um, editors can be further restricted within documents using access rules. Um, but by default, they are almost as powerful as owners. If you're interested in learning about access rules and how to limit that um, access, we have a webinar that covers this exclusively, which we'll link in the chat. Um, so check that out if you are interested. So next, we're gonna leave this one as viewer. So viewer has the ability to view documents, but cannot make edits. So that one's pretty straightforward. And then this last one, we're gonna give them no default access. And this one's described in the little gray text that's below it. Um, but by default, workspaces inherit this access from the team, and then our documents inherit from the workspace. So we'll walk through that in a minute. Users would have the same access to individual documents as set here at the team level. So the admin would be an owner on a document, the engineer would be the editor on the document that would be inherited. But with no default access, these team members would not be granted access automatically to any workspaces or documents. Um, so these users would need to be added to specific workspaces or documents every time. So now that we set that up, we're gonna confirm to save our changes.
So next, let's talk about workspaces. Um, workspaces are like folders for your documents and you can control access to those folders. So to add a workspace under the add new button, click the create workspace and it creates a new folder. So we'll add a few here. So each of your departments could have their own folder so that anytime they work on a new document, it would just automatically grant that appropriate access. Because what we can do is manage users for each workspace. So right now it's showing all of the users that I just created for the team. And that's because this inherit access is set to full, in full, meaning it's just gonna take anything that's at the team level where we just configured our new users. And we can change that. So you can set it to view and edit, which any owners would just change to editor and you would just have viewer and editors. View only, which would just make everyone viewers. Or you could do none, so it doesn't inherit any access at all. So we're gonna click none. Now it'll keep me because I am the creator of the workspace. And then I can go ahead and add any of my team members here. So I'll add them here and I'll confirm it. So now for engineering, we just have myself and the engineering email address. And so we'll go ahead and create a new document to show you what that does. So you can click this button here. Again, it's prompting you because you're new to the system, but you can also create a new document here Note that you can import documents both from your computer and from Google. Um, if you want to learn more about imports, just check out our Back to Basics webinar on migrating from spreadsheet to grist, and we'll link that in the chat. So create a new document here. Now manage users, again, available on our document. So if I click the share icon, I can manage the users for the document. And it is inheriting access here in full, but it's inheriting access from our workspace. So we went and changed the engineering workspace to none for inherit access, and we just added our engineer. And that's what this is inheriting. So team level, and then workspaces, and finally the document, it inherits in the row. So you can always add more users here and change their access. So note that if you change someone's access here, it only affects the document. This would not change their access anywhere else in the system, um, in your team. But let's say you changed accounting to owner at the team level that would change their access in anything that it's inheriting. Same with workspace. If I changed engineering's access in the workspace, it would change in any document that is inheriting that access. Uh, one more thing to note on here is that we have this public access option. That's for link sharing. So you can change it to on if you want your document publicly accessible. Right now it's off, meaning that the only people who have access to this document are those who are listed here. So if I change that to on, it adds public access like a user so we can actually change their access level. So you, you can change it to editor. Um, be very careful with this because it does mean that anyone with that link can change your data. But you can also use access rules around that. So again, check out that webinar. We go through all of that. Um, we will leave it as viewer, meaning someone with this link could then view my document. Now, one more thing that you can do with document sharing is invite someone who's not on your team. So I'll just add this outside user. 
and it adds them to the document. And here, as you see, it says one of two guests. You can have two guests per document. Um, so that's someone who's not on your team. Let's say you have a client and you just want them to be able to access a document, but not add them to your team. You could add them here and they would just be added as a guest. Just note you are allowed two per document. And you can also change their access here. Owner, editor, viewer. You can also add them to your team. If you are an owner, you can add them to your team if that's what they should be is a team member versus a guest. So before we go back to the home page, there's just one thing I want to note on at the document um, for collaboration. We have this cool tool called Work on a Copy. So you click that share icon in the upper right and then go to work on a copy. And as you see by the gray text there, it says edit without affecting the original. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're creating a duplicate that you can test out changes or practice a formula, whatever you need to do. Um, you can do it in this like side document, basically, so that you're not affecting what your team is working on. Then you have a couple options. If you just for practicing a small change, just go back to the original and add it. Or you can replace original. Um, and so this would save it over your existing copy. Just um, keep in mind that if, let's say, someone was working on the active copy while you were making changes in this unsaved copy, and then you replace original, it would override their work. So just make sure that if someone's on your team working on it, you could save a copy and just make sure that their work gets transferred onto this updated version. So I'm going to jump back to the home page and show you some cool features here. So once you have a document, again, we created this document under engineering, so it's nested there. In the upper right hand corner, when you hover over it, you get these three dots. And then you have a bunch of options for your document. You can rename it. You can move it, which would just give you the option to move it to another workspace. You can remove it, which would trash it. Um, it does give you a second pop up to make sure that you do want to delete it. If I delete it, it is available in the trash down here. And I can click into it and you have two options. You can restore it if you need it. You can delete it forever. If you do nothing, um, it'll be in the trash for 30 days. And then after that, it'll be permanently deleted. I'll just restore it. Oops, go back. There we go. So another cool tool here is pin document. So if you have one document that uh, your team uses all the time and it's good to keep it up at the top, you can pin it. And so that moves it up into this workspace right at the top. So it'll always be there for you. It does appear here as well within the workspace folder. But if you want to have something just stand out more, you can pin it. If you are no longer need it up there, you can unpin the document in that three dot menu as well. And it'll just live under the uh, workspace. You can also manage users directly from this page. So that would just be managing the users for that document. So again, we added our outside source there. That makes it easy. Let's say you add someone to the team and they need to be added on a few documents where the inherit access is set to none. You could quickly come through here, find the documents, manage users without having to click into each document. So it'll save you some time. Now up here on the upper right, you also have a sort. You can sort documents by name or you can sort by the date modified. So most recently modified will appear at the top or by name alphabetically. You also have this, these two options here. You can do list view where it'll just show the document name. 
And then the three dot here that we just went through, it's just off to the right. Or you can do the thumbnail version. And if you hover, you have the three dot menu. So let's walk through our little profile icon up here it has quite a few things. So we'll look at profile settings. Here you can edit your name at any time, um, but your password information is here too. So you can always change your password from this page. Now, if you are logging in with email and password versus logging in with Google, um, if you're using email and password, you do have the option to configure two-factor authentication. If you're logging in with Google, you would set that up through Google on their end. So here you can configure it. You would just type in your password. And then you can either use an authenticator app or your phone. Um, you would just enter your phone number. It then sends you a verification code that you would enter on the next screen. So if I do. Then it would send the authentication code to that phone number. I would type it in and then confirm, and then it would be ready to go. Now, something that came out recently is dark mode. You can change your appearance here from light to dark. Super cool. And then the last thing on this page is the API key. So if you need to be using that, you can just generate it by clicking the Create button. And then you can click into it to copy it. You can also delete it. So once you use the API key anywhere and you then delete it, it won't regenerate the same API key. It will regenerate a new API key. So if you do have things set up and you have to delete it, you will have to set those integrations back up. So keep that in mind. Um, it does warn you again before you delete it and then you can regenerate it. But again, it'll be a different API key. So here you can manage your team under the profile icon as well, uh, but we have this handy button up there so you don't have to click into here. And then we have billing account. Under billing account, you can actually change your team name. You can change your team subdomain. If you change your team subdomain, it will change all the links to your documents, um, which if someone has a bookmark saved that goes to a specific document, that link will now change. So it will be broken. Or if you have public sharing set up and you've shared a link to a document and then you change your team subdomain, that's now a new link as well. So keep that in mind if you do change the subdomain. And then here you can also add plan managers. So this is for billing. Any billing related emails would be sent to this group of people. So I can add our accounting. And now they'd have access to billing details as well. So the last thing I want to point out is that your personal site and your team site are different. Um, there can be some confusion around this. So when we first started the webinar, I was on my personal page. So there was no documents and we just created a, a team. Chris webinar is the team site and that's where I am right now. So it's highlighted. The at sign shows your personal page. So I click into that. I didn't have any documents created on my personal page, so it's just blank. I don't have any workspaces, but I do have a link to my team site, so I can click into that and jump right back. So just keep that in mind if you jump in and you're like, where are all my documents? Check the, the name up here. Uh, it'll say your team name or your personal name, and so you can change pretty easily. So that is everything today. Um, 
Let us know if you have any questions. You can put them in the chat. Or if there's something you want me to show again, I can certainly do that as well. How do you change the background? I don't know if you can. It would if you change the name of it. Let's see. That will change. But I don't know if there's a way to change the picture. And I use there's no way, correct? No, not currently. But okay. if that's something you would like, request it in the forum and then we'll maybe get some votes on it. Yeah, the templates are different. It's a special thing we can do, but we could put that in the product if enough people want it. Also, I just wanted to point out, um, I don't know if just uh, this is the series. Natalie, if you want to talk about um, the next three videos in the series that's focused on team sites, I have it handy if you don't have the list as well. Yep, I have it. So our next webinar next month will be the creator versus end user. It'll be about who builds and who consumes the document. What are the different tools available for collaborative building? Um, we'll walk through owner versus editor versus viewer, which I know we talked, touched on that today as well, but we'll reiterate that. We'll talk about who can manage users, who can do what. Uh, we'll walk through the creator panel, which when you click this little icon in the upper right with the like bar with the arrow, that opens the creator panel. So we'll walk through that. We'll talk about raw data document history, um, work on a copy, which we discussed today as well. But that one's so important, so we'll hit on it again. Um, and then we'll talk about the idea of a meta table that describes what a document does and is to creators. And then we'll go into basic access rules that grant or deny schema edits. And uh, we'll demonstrate some broad table rules. So you'll get a little taste of access rules in the next one. And then our third one is about modifying GRIST's task or project management template. Um, let's see, we'll, we do get a lot of users who see the template, they find them helpful, but they're like, how do I turn this into my own template, like my own document. How do I manipulate it? And so we'll walk through that. And then our fourth one is going to be about granular access rules. Um, so we will walk through user attributes and row level rules. And so we'll use the task management template for that um, to walk through those changes. So keep Keep those on your schedule. Well, we don't have dates for them yet, but keep it in your mind that those are coming uh, in the next three webinars. 